I'm David Hamburger, and in this lesson, I'll be showing you some of the ways to get started on playing an 8-bar blues, so you can add that kind of tune to your repertoire to go along with the 12-bar blues tunes you may already know. This month in my membership, The Fingerstyle 5, we're working on an 8-bar blues called You Got to Move. I'm going to talk about that tune and some other tunes like it in this lesson, but if you'd like to learn more about how to build your repertoire, develop your right-hand coordination, and start improvising on the blues, you can go to fretboardconfidential.com to learn more about my monthly membership. Okay, let's get started with the eight bar blues. I'm playing this particular tune in the key of E. And there's a funny thing about these tunes that I'm gonna present, which is as I started learning more of these kinds of tunes, uh, there's a family of tunes that are all basically almost the same song. Uh, it starts with um, the Mississippi Sheik's tune, Sitting on Top of the World, which uh, you may know more from versions like Howlin' Wolf's electric band version. But that tune uh, shares the same chord progression and melody with Robert Johnson's Come On In My Kitchen, and with a Tampa Red instrumental called Things About Coming My Way, and with the gospel tune, You Got To Move, and with the blues tune, um, It Hurts Me Too, which is the most, one of the best known versions is the Elmore James song, It Hurts Me Too. So there's this whole family of songs. And uh, so in working on these things, I sort of went from thinking like, well, you want to play an upright blues, you're going to play um, Key to the Highway. You know, sort of having that be the only version of an eight-bar blues I could think of off the top of my head, to having this whole family of tunes. And there's others as well. Um, but I'll focus on this one today um, and just talk about the chord progression and a bit about the melody and how to get started uh, working on something like that. So instead of having the 12-bar chord progression, you've only got eight bars. And this particular chord progression starts off with two bars of E. And goes to A. And then often to A minor in the fourth bar. And then for the second half of the song, for bars five through eight, you've got E up to the five chord to B7, and then back to E. And here's where you might have a turnaround in bar seven, leading up to one more B7 chord in the eighth bar. So E for one bar two bars, up to A for a bar, and then A minor for a bar, E, B7, back to E, turn around, and a final bar of B7. Now if you're playing a solo fingerstyle version of this tune, then your thumb is basically going to stand in for the entire chord progression. Your thumb is the rhythm section, so you'd have, if you're playing in a steady bass style with four beats per bar, thumb playing on one, two, three, and four, you'd have this for your first bar, and then more E for your second bar, up to A for bar three, and stay on A for bar four, whether it's major or minor, then back to E for a bar, up to B7 for a bar, and then to E, and then start this turnaround descent, and then staying on B7. So that would sort of frame the whole tune, and it's always a good idea to start with the bass line because that is going to give you the shape of the tune, right? It's giving you the groove, it's giving you the chord progression, it's giving you the overall form of what the eight bars are gonna look like. Some of these tunes actually end up like most versions of Sitting on Top of the World, the way the melody's phrased and the way the turnaround comes in, it often ends up being more of a nine bar blues. So just be aware of that if you're listening to different versions of people playing these songs and you're trying to count it out and it starts to feel like it's not exactly fitting into eight bars, that's because it often isn't. But it's still basically, in spirit, an eight bar tune. So this melody that is shared by so many of these tunes you can start to work it out just on the high string. The root, and the third, and the fifth. And then landing on the third. And then going to the root of the A chord. 
chord. That might be where the A minor happens. And then we've got some blues licks starting on the second string. So here you're playing these blues licks over a B7 chord. And here for the turnaround, while you're playing this bass note on the fifth fret of the fifth string, right, the flat seven of the chord, you're gonna grab the fifth of the chord over here on the fourth fret of the third string. So making kind of an E7 shape, but up here, and then playing the high string. So thumb and index are gonna pinch the fifth and the third string. Ring finger's gonna play the high string. You're gonna move back fret by fret. Right, so looking at the bass first to get it sort of the whole shape of the tune and then looking at the melody phrase by phrase, if instead of thinking of them as each individual note, you think of them as phrases like the, the vocal phrases of the tune. There's the first one. Here's the next one. And notice instead of playing like that flat third of the pentatonic scale, playing the major third like of the major pentatonic scale, but like also the major third of the E chord. So here we're basically spelling out an E chord with this first lick. Then we're coming back down. Those are the first two phrases. Then, and then, so you've got four little groups, which can be a kind of good mnemonic way to Keep track of what's going on. And even if you're not putting the whole steady bass in yet, sometimes just playing the bass note helps you to hear the melody in context. Ah, that's what we're doing over an E chord. Still on an E chord. Now into more of the blues lick, starting on the B string. Here's the next phrase, and then Done. So really seven phrases. And again, coming up through an E chord, going down. This one goes down. And then further down. Going up. And reversing that. And there are various variations on that turnaround. I've always kind of like this one. It's kind of weird and inside out. So you're starting here on the fifth fret and the fourth fret, then going to kind of an A chord with the fourth fret and the root. So here's, uh, here's the third of the A chord and the root of the A chord, fourth fret over here and second fret over here. Then this, third fret on both strings. This is the root and flat seven of a C7 chord. And then back to E, so. And then. So there's the bass and there's the melody. So now if you want to put them together, then you have to think about, well, what am I doing with my thumb and what am I doing with my fingers at the same time, not at the same time to sort of put the whole thing together. But if you have the bass laid out and the melody laid out, now you have these two horizontal things happening, right? The bass is happening over time and the melody's happening over time. So now when you go to figure out the finger style part of it, all the grippy stuff you're doing with your thumb and fingers, now you're just sort of working on the mechanics to get this musical thing to happen, which is the musicality of having the melody happening over the bass. So you look at where you're gonna to need to pinch play the thumb and the fingers at the same time.
once you can do that, then you can start to think about, well, where would I maybe support this melody with a chord? Right, so like an E7 chord with the flat seven and the root and the fifth. Another E7 chord here, maybe. Here's the fifth and the flat seven and the third. chord with the third and the fifth and then the melody note on top is actually the ninth down to the root and here you can start to spell it in a minor with the root flat third and fifth start improvising, you could start thinking about taking a minor pentatonic scale on the top two strings and maybe including a slide from the flat third to the third. And then keeping the bass the same as you did for the melody. that, you know, this turnaround this, this, and this chord progression are pretty flexible. One really fun thing to do is when you get to the second line, it's supposed to just be E to B7, you can play to the sixth chord, C sharp seven, to the F sharp seven. That's a way to get started with the eight bar blues. And again, it's a great addition to your repertoire to have a blues tune that doesn't follow the 12 bar form. And once you start looking around, you'll see more and more of these. St. James Infirmary, Motherless Child, Nobody's Fault But Mine, House of the Rising Sun. There are tons of the major and minor keys. And of course, Key to the Highway and all the variations on sitting on top of the world that I mentioned at the outset. Sitting on top of the world, you got to move, uh, it hurts me too, all those come on in my kitchen. So have fun working with this. Again, if you'd like to learn more about building your repertoire, starting to improvise, or just solidifying your basic right-hand coordination for fingerstyle, visit my website, fretboardconfidential.com to learn all about my membership, the Fingerstyle 5, and I'll see you next time.